Wheel of Destiny Welcome topic. Welcome to the yeah. Rotten Tomatoes game. How is this How only? is this only? I struggled. I had like three movies that I want. I'm, I still haven't actually decided which one I'm going to do. I, it's just going to come to me in the moment, which well, one I'm going to pick. Well, you're going to have to. But I don't want to mention all three because I want to be able to save some of these two for future editions of How Is This Only. You're going to have to Kenny pick it right now. I know. Oh, good one. <laughs> good one. You're going to make me go first? Oh, yeah. All right. I know which one I'm going to go with. I got I to gotta pull up Rotten Tomatoes so that I can... You know, put it on the screen when you put it when you tell me what it is. So give me a second so I can pull up the the tomato meter here, and then uh, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. This is where we get to sort it out. This is the sorts portion of the show. Hell yeah! Oh, I spelled rotten wrong. That's that's not good. Where do you think you're going? I'm gonna sort it I'm out. Gonna sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got the rotten tomatoes up. Um. All right, let's see what you got. Let's see what you got here. I want to see what you got. Well, I don't know if you played that sorted out clip before we started this segment. I didn't. I played the how is it the only. No. Yeah. I, I don't well, have. If you had, I, don't, I don't have the clip right now. If you had, it would that fit. Would have been quite the segue, because the movie that I chose was The Ghost and the Darkness. Good movie. Good movie. Very, very under. You and I both like this movie. It's a great Quite movie. Quite a bit. It's Jaws on Land. It, and it's Val Kilmer. Like, this is and like Val Kilmer in his prime. When he was like, he was a, he he's was a good looking man. He was an upcoming, like, beast of an actor. It seemed like he was like the action star. Yeah, like the next action no, star. Yeah, like he could have gone had, into like so many different roles there are a number of val kilmer movies that i could probably end up for me on the how is this mm -hmm. only list like for one the saint is a movie i absolutely love i love the saint and again val kilmer young kind of height of his powers mm -hmm. very underrated movie i love that movie him and elizabeth shoe it is a very, it's a good movie it's solid it's a fun movie mm -hmm. it's it's a fun movie I, it could end up on a future one but for this one i actually did ghost in the darkness and i was very disappointed to see that the ghost in the darkness with critics was sitting at 51%. That is and sad. I'm sorry, Rotten Tomatoes, you're wrong. You're wrong. Well, not Rotten Tomatoes wrong. Th those critics are wrong. And there is a 24%, 24 percentage point differential between what the critics thought of that movie mm -hmm. and what the audience thought of that movie. 51% for critics, 76, 70, excuse me, 75% for the audience. You and I are clearly with the audience mm -hmm. on that movie. As I, as if, because if, if I were to watch The Ghost of the Darkness, if I were to give it a Cinebros rating, I'd probably go eight out of 10. Mm -hmm. So I'm right there with the audience. I would say about it. a seven, seven and a half. Yeah. I'd say it's so, very good. So you're right. You're right yeah. there. You're right with the audience. Uh -huh. there. Well, I, I mean, like it's, it, yeah, it's like they're 75%. Just, I like positive, it just but, yeah. to scooch more because I just think it's a, it's just a great, I just love it. I think it's a, but I don't see how that movie is only 51%. I don't, I just don't like objectively speaking. I don't see how the ghost in the darkness is sitting at 51% with critics. Now, is that like an egregiously bad number? No, but you're still only basically half the critics only thought it was good. And the other half thought it was rotten. And yeah. I disagree with the half that thought it was rotten. Yeah. So that is my choice for how is this only? Yeah, I can't, it goes to the darkness 51%. at 51%. And it's not like, I don't understand why they would give it a 51%. No, That's I know. Because it's it was a, it wasn't like boring. It was entertaining. It was suspenseful. It was like. Right. And, and you had the like. The dialogue was pretty good. What was great about the it story was the it. similarities between it and Jaws. Right down to like the characters. Okay, clearly Val Kilmer is Chief Brody, right? Mm-hmm. Clearly, um, oh, who was the other? Who was the other guy? Um, not, I mean, Michael Douglas was clearly Quint because he played Remington, and that's clearly Quint. I mean, like, 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 you know, like there, the guy who was actually there to hunt the lions and gets eaten by lions. Quint was there to kill the shark, and he gets eaten by the shark. And then the other guy was sort of like Hooper. His, the other guy who was there with him, I can't remember his name. Oh, man. What was the name? He was good, too. He was such a good character, too. But it was just like the three guys. It, but it was Jaws on land. And, and you did it service, too. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't B actors. You had fucking Michael Douglas. 
I mean, dude, the guy's a, first of all, I can't believe he's still alive, but Michael Douglas. Yeah, he's, he's definitely aged. I wouldn't say he's aged. Well, he's aged, no doubt about it, but the man is old. What do you want? I mean, hell, he still could show up in an occasional Avengers movie, you know? I mean, he can still, you know, he's still, he, he's, he's still Pym. <laughs> he's still got sure. the Pym particles. It's true. Um, he's been, a, uh, so bottom line, and let's be honest, without him, there's no, uh, Thanos snaps half of existence out of the world. There's no going back. Right. So you needed them Pym particles. Pym. Um, but bottom line, Pym. yeah, Ghost of the Darkness, man. Sorry. That oh. needs to be, the audience had that right. I, 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 I yeah. would never have argued with 75. You can't argue with 75. I agree with that. That's a, good, that's a good review. All so right. There you go. So my um, Rotten Tomatoes, how is this only, is a movie. Because I, so I, I started looking at this basically because he just recently did an interview because he has a oh. movie coming out. And, yeah. um, you know, he has a very divisive fan base. There's a lot of people that love him. A lot of people that are like, wow, he's such a weirdo. But mine is going to be the Nicolas Cage movie, Gone in 60 Seconds. Okay. So okay. I think that movie is a lot of fun. Now, do I think it's like the thespians, like, great movie, like, deserves Oscar? No, I don't. I think that it's, it's an extremely fun heist movie. There's lots of cool car chase scenes. It has one of I my, remember it. It has my favorite car, Eleanor. Which is that 1960? Yeah, I mean, it's just a, a beautiful uh, 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 yeah. Mustang, mm -hmm. and I love this movie just because it's a lot of fun. It's one of those movies you pop on and you can wa start watching it anywhere and just kind of enjoy it. Oh wow, um, yeah. I mean, and twenty-five percent. That's, That's a good one. Twenty-five percent. The critics. This is where I just think that they miss the boat. They don't understand. Just as sitting down, popcorn movie. Enjoy yourself. Right. right. Like. Watch the car, watch the back and forth between the actors and watch like just some fun stuff happen on the screen. And that's what this is. This is just a fairly fun movie that you can sit down and it's not quite as good as the A-Team in my, my, like that reboot that they did with like Liam Neeson and Bradley Cooper and all that kind of stuff. Like that is a very fun movie and it has a little bit more depth than this one. But this yeah. one is just fun. It's just a fun I'm trying movie to watch. see, what was it, 100 and, based on 100 and how many reviews? 38 reviews. 38, okay. It was really small on the screen. I couldn't, I couldn't make it 25%. out. 25%. And the audience... And has, that's a decent amount of reviews. And too. over 250,000 with the audience in 77. Yeah, I, I would... Um, I remember that movie. I do remember liking it. I would be I would be closer to the audience. I probably would have had it in the six out of ten, but I would yeah, definitely it's, be I would closer say six to the and a half. Than, yeah, like six and a half, like than, fun. Um, yeah, that's not a twenty five percent. No, movie. I would that's definitely bad. give that's, it a positive a, rating. Yeah, that's silly. Yeah, was well, there was there maybe some anti Nick Cage bias at the time? I don't know. No, I think it's just I think it's just it's not it doesn't they don't understand the fun side of it for the most part like if it doesn't have a great story and good depth to it like they just they're just like lost and they can't just sit there and enjoy a you know a big huge vat of popcorn yeah. and some candy and a you know and a water or a diet coke or something like that and just enjoy what's on the screen yeah it's like a waste now, of their time i'm not here you, to have fun <laughs> did you watch over the week uh the batman i did okay what are your thoughts i watched it I've watched it multiple times. I've I've watched it once. I watched it with my son. Um, yeah, I watched it with the girls. And uh, on Monday, I, on Monday night it was our Monday night. Monday I liked night. it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite Batman of all time. Um, several plot holes and things like that. Uh, but I do love the way that they did the Riddler. I do love the, you know, the kind of little bit of Joker that you saw and that the, the deleted scene Joker thing that's out there as well. Yes. Um, all that stuff was great. Um, yep. and I'm excited to see what happens from here, if anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I, I thought it was a very well done movie. I wouldn't say, I think it's, it's great to see Batman just being Batman, even mm -hmm. in his Bruce Wayne form. Like yeah. he is not that playboy philanthropist that he is then, but he kind of, they have a little bit of a segue throughout that kind of gives you that feeling like oh he's not there yet yeah so that's where i feel like you're going to see 
maybe in the next movie, a Bruce Wayne and, and Batman change. There's going to be the separation of the two. Um, whereas right now, you just kind of got a broody guy. And I, I, I really enjoyed what they did with the Batman. I, I really liked that stuff. Um, they didn't really go into Bruce Wayne very much. I thought Selena Kyle was good. I, I liked what they did with Alfred, even though they didn't use him a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gordon, great. Uh, I think the the Riddler was cast exceptional. I think yeah. I think I love. I, I really enjoy the really dark and twisted way that they're going to do the Joker. Um, so yeah. I'm I'm excited to see what happens more than I like. I think like just like um, Batman Begins. Like I liked that movie. I didn't love it. I love the Dark Knight, and I feel like that's where they're going from here. I think the next movie will be that more that that if they if they do which i'm sure sure they're going to this movie did very well about 800 million at the box office there's no way they're not making so i i well there's always a chance that they just reboot the whole thing again to try and make that well that would be very dc yeah so so disjointed i I never know what they're going to do but i would say they should continue the story see this is my problem with dc is there's just like this is where this is where marvel has really mastered it because there's one guy behind everything and mm-hmm. his name is Kevin Feige and DC is all over the place. They have the DCEU, mm-hmm. but then they have these other offshoots of this. And then you have the Joker movie, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's a mess. It's a big mess. This movie is really good. Yes. I give this, I'm firmly with the audience here. I'm in, I'm in the eight out of, I think it's like 86. I would say eight out of 10. Tomatoes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in the eight out of 10. Yeah. That, that's where I'm at on this movie. Really well done. Um, dark. It was a crime story. Uh, mm-hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't, um, yes, it was the Riddler, but it wasn't like campy Riddler. It wasn't like Frank Gorshin, you know, with a skin sight, skin tight suit, jumping around with a big question mark no. on his chest. You know, this guy was scary. And he was a serial killer. It was it was very like, you know, it was very serial killer ish mm-hmm. kind of, you know. Yeah. And it was very, like I said, very crime drama. Um, well done. And even, you know, I like the Joker just kind of being completely off his rocker in Arkham, you know, like and and um I would have shaved off about 30 minutes of stuff that I think could have easily hit the cutting room table and just added in the five minute deleted scene with the Joker too. I would have done that. Okay. Um, and then I think you would have had a nine out of 10 movie maybe because there's just, there was a lot. It didn't need to be three hours. Um, but I like Pattinson. Um, I think, uh, I, I the, the guy who played Gordon, I liked, um, uh, to me, I would have liked a little more Andy Serkis mm-hmm. uh, because one, he's just a great actor. And he did great. And, and he was great in the role for the he short was good, period of yeah. times. Yeah, they got. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was good, right? And I would have liked to have seen a. I could have gone. I could have gone for one more scene with him. I think you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a really well. It was a really well done movie, and mm-hmm. it was very enjoyable. I think Zoe was great. I mean, Colin Farrell as the Penguin was was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's funny. Before I saw the movie, I was like, why couldn't they just cast like a fat guy, a fat, ugly guy to go, why do they have to dress up this beautiful man (laughs) and, you know, uh, in like a fat suit? But you know what? Colin was great. He was. I'm glad they did that. I'm glad they did it the way they did it. They had a, they, but listen, Matt Reeves must have had a, uh, Matt Reeves, Reeves, right? Is it Reeves? It's Reeves. Yeah. Plural. It's Mm -hmm. not like Christopher Reeve. It's Reeves. No, it's Reeves. Um, he had a reason for casting Colin Farrell, and I see why. That was really well done. Mm-hmm. And look, all your big three, as far as criminals, are still out there. Penguin, after the scene where they leave him, like mm-hmm. where they play the good cop, bad cop thing. Yeah. And then he's just kind of like hopping around with like, like the chains on. He's like, are you guys going to just leave me here? Yeah. <laughs> That's when they leave him. So you know he's still out there. Uh-huh. And you know that the Riddler and the Joker are in Arkham. And let's be honest, the Riddler and the Joker's thing is escaping Arkham. So, I mean, Arkham is not, unfortunately, it's not a vault. <laughs> People get in and out of there pretty easily. Yes. So, um, you know, there's obviously a lot. I mean, you, there's a lot of room. And you know Catwoman is around. She's, she's She went she went off. You know, she took her cat and her motorcycle and she headed off. But mm-hmm. she's not done either. Um, 
Now I know Zoe Kravitz is under a little bit of fire these days, so who knows if she got canceled or not, but <laughs> what, what happened to her? Oh, I don't know. There was some, something that she, I don't remember. D- just look it up. I can't remember. She's under, she said, she said or did something dumb, I think, but mm. um, at any rate though, all the players are still very heavily involved, right? Mm-hmm. Like everyone is still there. Um, obviously the way things have set up Joker would seem to be the next logical pick mm-hmm. for your, your big villain face off. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I was really, I was really pleased with it. I think it was a very well done movie and I look forward to any sequel that they want to do. Nice. Uh, and it just doesn't need to be three hours. That's all. No, I mean, you know what I like drag. It didn't drag for me. No, no, not at all. No, like I said, I've already watched it twice. Yeah. Um, and I, I probably will watch it again. Um, the one thing there were, the one thing I liked was um, there was no, we didn't have to relive the entire. How did he become Batman? They, they just, none of that. they briefly touched on it, and that was it. Very briefly. Yeah. And then the other thing that I liked, right in like that opening, after the Riddler kills the mayor there in that opening scene, I liked how they did the whole the thing where. They focused on like three different crimes that were going on at one point. Mm-hmm. The one guy who holds, uh, who holds up like you know the convenience store, the guy spray painting you know broken on the pillars there at town at City Hall, yeah. And then you had the subway incident where he actually shows up. But I loved that whole kind of like, um, that that just sort of that that that. Uh, narration by Robert Pattinson of that whole opening scene with like fear talking about fear and how they don't know where I am I can't be everywhere at once it's a big city but they don't know where I am and like I thought that was cool and then you know of the three things that was going on obviously you know I think y'all kind of knew it was going to be the subway thing because we knew that from the previews that it was going to be the subway yeah yeah um, because of those guys with their with their faces painted, yeah. but I thought that was cool. I liked that. I liked that sort of, you know, and just like those guys looking down those dark alleys and being like, "Oh shit, is he down there?" You know, mm-hmm. I just I don't know. I thought that was cool. It had like a lot of that. Ooh, it's it's that what lies beneath. We don't really know if he's there or not. It left some stuff up to the imagination. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I thought that was cool. All right, cool. I thought it was a nice twist. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for our show today. We got to spin that wheel. Mm. Um, let's do that Indeed. real quick. While you're doing that, let's just say we've reached the end of our program. And to quote the great Tony Stark, part of the journey is in the end. We'll be back next Monday. But spin that wheel, baby. Spin that wheel. And first, we got to do the. Hell yeah. did that we're not doing that ah, spin it again. oh recast lethal weapon wow hmm. i like it i like it i like it wow recast lethal okay